Well, it was an all-out slugfest in Republican presidential debate number 19. Frontrunners Newt Gingrich and Mitt Romney hitting each other hard as the crucial Florida primary draws near. Here's just a sample. Speaker Gingrich was hired by Freddie Mac to promote them, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, influence other people throughout Washington, encouraging them to uh, not to dismantle these two entities. I think that was an enormous mistake. Uh, I think instead we, we should have had a whistleblower and not a, a horn tutor. Uh, he should have stood up and said, look, these things are a disaster. This is a crisis. He should have been anxiously telling the American people that these entities were causing a housing bubble that would cause a collapse that we've seen here in Florida and around the country. The governor has cheerful the governor has cheerfully been attacking me inaccurately, and he knows it. The contracts we released from Freddie Mac said I would do no consulting, wrote in, no, cons I mean, no lobbying, none. But there's a more interesting story. We began digging in after Monday night because, frankly, I'd had about enough of this. We discovered to our shock, Governor Romney owns uh, shares of both Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Governor Romney made a million dollars off of selling some of that. Governor Romney owns share and has an investment in Goldman Sachs, which is today foreclosing on Floridians. But it was Rick Santorum who may have had the best moment of the night when he suggested the political fistfights were not really helping anyone. Take a look. These two gentlemen who are out distracting from the most important issues we have by playing petty personal politics, can we set aside that Newt was a member of Congress and used the skills that he developed as a member of Congress to go out and advise companies, and that's not the worst thing in the world, and that Mitt Romney is a wealthy guy because he worked hard and he's going out and working hard, and you should guys leave that alone and focus on the issue. What a moment. Let's bring in our focus group now, a panel of Republican voters uh, who are trying to decide who they want to support in this election. Did, did, was that Rick Santorum's best moment of that debate? David Selleck. Well, I don't think we need Rick Santorum to be an arbiter of what we can speak about. I think what happened here was spirited discourse, and we need more of that. You and liked it. You liked absolutely, it and I would like to preface it by saying I thought Newt Gingrich conducted himself with such distinction and presidential candor that he really wiped the floor with Mitt Romney. Wow, wow. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm seeing a disagreement. T Tracy Davis. Well, I do disagree. I think it just got very dirty, and I think that Will, uh, the way that Wolf Blitzer handled it um, from the very beginning, I think his first question should have been, what's your reaction to the State of the Union? All of the questions in the beginning made that happen. It, it encouraged this bickering back and forth between the two of them, and I, and I think that Santorum, that was his moment. In Wolf's defense, but he picked up on bickering that had been been put out there by the candidates. I mean, he was quick to but say, I mean, look, you, knew, still, you don't want to talk about it tonight, but you put it out there. And same thing with Romney. But he still, I mean, why not really just go for the big issues first? He kept, whole, he kept pushing them. Go, go ahead, Tom Borelli. The whole thing was staged like a boxing match or a football game. First, they introduce all the candidates. I was just missing the cheerleaders. And then the questions go on to bait the infighting. They should have asked about President Obama's State of the Union That's address. Is it the questions, yeah. though? It's easy to beat up on the moderator. Now, now you sound like Newt. Uh, <laughs> it's easy to beat up on the moderator. But, or is it the candidates? Because Rick Santorum was also encouraged to do that. And you right. heard how he re responded to well, it very well. Well, we have to remember, we're probably a very small number of Americans who are watching every debate. Not most, most Americans, I don't think, watch every debate. So a lot of Americans don't know about what's going back and forth with Romney and Gingrich because they're not listening to it every time. For me, though, it was like watching two 13-year-old girls fight over a boy. I, I just, I was just like, enough already. So when Soren, Santorum said that, I was like, finally, Rick Santorum woke up, yay. Mm -hmm. And I really applauded him for that because, like, we talk about something of substance. Well, and yeah. as Republicans, yeah. let me ask you that. Does anybody feel upset when they see the bloodbath, you know, going on? The, no. the candidates yes. really beating up on each other. Very well, much. Or, or is it helping you make up your mind? Tony Sayak. No. Well, look, I, I think if we watch the past debates, Newt did not rise to the top of the pack being this dignified statesman. Right. And now all of a sudden, that's what he's trying to be. It, it looks a little disingenuous. And Romney's biggest criticism was that he wasn't offensive enough. He wasn't vigorous and aggressive. Sure. Now he's showing that. So I don't think we could criticize them because sometimes style, especially against a president now like you, Barack Obama, is as important as You like as Romney. Did you like Romney? I've Romney grown to like night? Romney. And I have to tell you, last night was the first time I gave Mitt Romney a standing in my own living room. Really? Because I thought he finally that stood up to the plate. <laughs> it it kind of was. And, and I can't believe I admitted that. Yeah. Okay, but the truth is, it was about time for him to stand up for himself. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. been really, I think, a Good. bit more unfairly attacked, particularly with the Jay baby. Townsend, how'd you feel about it? Look, taken as a whole, 
These debates have been critically important to the process. We've learned a lot about the candidates. I know far more about what these guys are going to do if they sit in the Oval Office than I do from our current president, who still is pretty shy about telling us where he intends to go. So, so what? There's a little food fight here and there. Does anybody want to revisit the Obama-Clinton contest of four years ago? Which the Democrats and, believed helped their cause, and the Republicans appeared to agree, since that's why they structured this year's primary contest oh, as right. long as it, as mm -hmm. it has been. This, they, they liked that this, model. This has supplanted a lot of the paid ads uh, in, in terms of importance. We've learned more from the debates than we have the advertising. Now, is there an argument, is there an argument that this debate process is going to help the Republican mm -hmm. candidate because... You mentioned Mitt Romney, who's gotten better. He's yes, gotten a right. lot more, you know, pointed, at Absolutely. least in his response. Yeah. Uh, would you feel more comfortable having, you know, the, the Republican candidate go out against Barack Obama after watching them in this process? Tasha Powell. Tasha Powell. Definitely, definitely, Megan. We have so much to lose. We cannot afford four more years of Obama. So we need somebody who is very strong. And that's what this debate is going to do. I mean, Obama is a very skilled politician. He speaks well. So we need to get the weaknesses out now for the GOP, and we need to get the strength going. Is so, there an uh, argument for that, that, that you know, all these attacks, the, even the ugly ones, right? Yes. Newt on Romney with Bain and Romney now on Newt and Freddie Mac, that that will wind up helping the Republican candidate because it's been out there. It's less it's old news. shocking, yeah. you know, yeah. once it's out there. there. Well, certainly the process is tedious at this point, and I'm sure the candidates are tired. But in the long run, they're being vetted right now. All the, the controversial topics are being talked about, whether it's around these personal finances or the speaker's marriages. And this is something that we want to talk about now. It's late January. Get it out of the, out of the way. We'll have our nominee by the summer. And we get into some more substantive issues with the president uh, in October. Does it make you feel uncomfortable when you hear them getting ugly? Like last yes. night, Didi, we saw Didi Benke. We saw the, the exchange about Romney. On, is he anti-immigrant? He really went after Newt on that. For the first time, he really went mm. after Newt on that. And they had a spirited back and forth. Does it make you uncomfortable? No. I'm glad that uh, Mitt Romney had a great debate. It was his best ever. He took it, and people want to fight her. And that's why Newt Gingrich has been doing so well. But last night, Newt Gingrich lost. I mean, Mitt Romney won. He was spirited. He was strong. David and doesn't I like, think he lost. And I like, no, not at all. No, Mitt Romney definitely won. And people want him to be strong, fight it, and say, hey, I'm a capitalist. I'm a success story. Mm -hmm. And that is what America is all about. And Rick Santorum's a nice guy, but we're not playing high school tennis. We're at the Olympics. We're there right. to win the big right. game. Right. And believe me, Barack right. Obama is going to bring it. In the Go ahead, Tom. Conservatives don't only want to beat Obama, they want to pummel him. Yeah. And that's why they like people who are spirited and fiery mm -hmm. because because they know Obama's destroying the country and conservatives are rallying spirited on that and cause. fiery but the, but when it gets personal I mean we saw before the mm -hmm. Iowa vote Newt called Mitt a, a, a liar and then Romney has called Mitt some things and you know last night wasn't even sure whether it was his ad that was going after Newt and then yeah. Wolf yeah. Butcher proved, proved it was his ad yeah. are but, all those but, little chips yeah, in the right. armor that the Republican candidates are suffering before they go up against Barack right. Obama well I think that it's good only I mean it's it's uncomfortable, I think, for Republicans to watch, but it is important because, you know, actually the money issue, now that it's out, it's going to be harder for Obama, let's say it was Mitt. But also, when I was on, uh, you know, the campaign on Bush, Bush sort of reminds me a little bit of Romney, and he was not a good debater. when Bush 41. But, yeah, he was pretty bad about it and and so and I so I like the fact that they're getting better I, I don't like the little fights but that's going to happen in the general so, so, Romney, 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 so I think Romney improved Romney amazingly hired a coach who we got from Michelle Fox. yes he did and, 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 see the difference. and the difference was ridiculous you know, like, he really about them getting personal and it's kind of like here we, we don't get personal I may dislike your opinion about something but we never make it personal and I think they have to be very careful of making it personal but it's different if Obama does it's 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 different. Different. It's a lot of but it's different if Obama does it. Gingrich, he has brought it. He is a wants a strong military. He's a good and loyal friend to Israel, and he wants to abolish capital gains what, taxes. What, that's but, what Americans need. Yeah, so with the exception of Ron Paul, this is why I, I think after 19 debates to say we haven't talked about issues is, is a little silly because we have. And with the exception of Ron Paul, they all generally believe the same things on foreign policy, defense policy, economic policy, and of course, your point, Tom, something drastically different than Obama is what all these guys represent. But Didi's point's exactly right before. Obama is going to be so much more aggressive, much yes. more financed, stronger, better
better sure. organized. Mm -hmm. If these guys can't handle this type of debate now in, in January, they're not going to be able to hold up against well, the, the, the problem, problem is the audience. Because Ron Paul is an, is an unorthodox Republican candidate. Has anybody, after watching him in all of these debates, very facile with the facts, seems like it's sincere, you know, when he answers these questions. Has anybody been moved yes. to Def toward yeah, Ron absolutely. Paul? Yes. Definitely. Really? I like him. He's a great in teacher. Some ways. Go ahead, Mary. Wait, wait. I like him, and, I, and you're, the men aren't going to understand this, but the women will. Because I don't feel like I'm dating him. <laughs> because oh, no, we've, wait, 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 for us to say he's going to tell us what we want. No, he's going to create the jobs that we need. People are losing their homes, and we don't know what Gingrich, the relationship Gingrich but here's had my, well, with Freddie Mac. Here's my favorite moment of the debate last night when he asked, uh, Wolf Blitzer asked Ron Paul what he would do if he was on the on the phone with Castro, and he said, well, I'd ask him why he called. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. We're sending the politicians to the moon. Great, great job. Great job, panel. Thank you so much. And we're taking your emails on it at kelly at foxnews.com. Well, she gets points and prizes.